Hello, Electroheads, Ailish here, and I've been busy reading up. I didn't know you could read. Yes, I can read. On some potentially game changing technology that could drastically cut down on the use of fossil fuels and mining when it comes to making EV batteries. And all thanks to a Scandinavian forestry company that's older than Westminster Abbey. And let's face it, Westminster Abbey is old disasters. Mm. So we all know electric cars are good, partly because there's no exhaust pipe spewing out fossil fuel fumes at toddler head height as you drive along. But, and there's always a but, EVs aren't carbon neutral. Firstly, there's the impact of the power used to charge them up. Coal and other fossil fuels still account for a large percentage of power generation, but strides are being made all the time on that front with renewables like wind and solar bringing more and more power to the party. In fact, the UK government says almost 43% of the UK's power came from renewables last year, while companies like Octopus are investing in more and more green energy projects across Europe all the time, as well as smart EV charging points, which means you can top up your car when it's cheapest and greenest. So things are getting better and better all the time on that front. But there's another area where EVs are very much not carbon free and that's the production of the cars themselves. And in this respect, EVs are actually dirtier than their petrol and diesel cousins as the build process for electric cars results in higher carbon emissions. And a lot of that is to do with batteries. At this point, we need to get a little bit technical and I'll need you to pay attention because as a pre-reward, for listening carefully, I'm going to let you watch a few seconds of some really cute puppies. What the hell is that music? Oh, sorry, change, change, change. <laughs> right, here we go. Most EVs use lithium ion batteries, which are essentially just bigger versions of the battery in your phone or iPad. They consist of a positive electrode, a cathode and a negative electrode, which is called an anode. So when the battery is charged, lithium ions in the cathode move into the anode where they're stored until the battery is discharged. So when you drive the car. Are you with me so far? Um, no, I'm not. So those carbon anodes are typically made from graphite and the only way to get that is by digging it out of the ground, usually in giant open-faced mines. This can not only cause pretty much major environmental damage, but the whole process is pretty bad for generating those greenhouse gases that EVs are meant to avoid. And there's another drawback. The vast majority of graphite is mined in China, which means battery production is mostly limited to China as well. Which means before car makers even start building the EV, they've got to ship the batteries all the way from, yeah, yeah, you guessed it. China. Again, not great on the carbon emissions front. But of course, when the first EVs hit the road, this wasn't much of a problem because the numbers were so small. But we're now at the point where electric cars are becoming mainstream and sales are about to skyrocket higher than Elon's latest SpaceX mission. In fact, one study reckons that by 2030, some 80% of all new cars sold in Europe will be electric. That's a hell of a lot of batteries we're going to need and a hell of a lot of graphite that's going to have to be ripped out of the ground to make them. But obviously, don't get me started on all the millions of barrels of oil that are drilled and refined every year to keep petrol cars on the road. Anyway, enter a Swedish Finnish company called Stora Enzo. It was originally a mining outfit and is reckoned to be the oldest recorded company in the world with paperwork stretching all the way back to the year 1288, which must mean they have a pretty next level filing system and I don't even know where my latest bank statement is. A few years ago, they gave up mining and now call themselves a leading global provider of renewable solutions in packaging, biomaterials, wooden construction, and paper. They also own more forest land than Robin Hood and the Ewoks put together, and they reckon the solution to all that graphite we're gonna need is, drum roll please, trees. Yep, our forest-dwelling Scandinavian pals are busy working on an unlikely-sounding wooden battery for electric cars. Sort of. Remember I said Stora Enzo are big players in the paper world? Well, to make paper, you first need to make pulp from trees. One of the byproducts of this process is something called lignin, which gives the wood its stiffness and resistance to rotting. So trees are made up of about 20 to 30% of lignin, and Stora Enzo say it's one of the biggest renewable sources of carbon anywhere on earth. Usually once it's been removed from the pulp, it's burned to provide power for the paper mill itself. But these canny Swedes and Finns are taking the lignin and refining it into carbon power, which is turned into electrode sheets. 
These electrodes then take the place of the graphite and are combined with the other elements to create a lithium ion battery. Clever, right? Stora Enzo call it the lig node and say batteries made in this way perform better at lower temperatures, opening the door to more use of EVs in harsher climates and will charge faster than the fossil fuel powered market leader. They also say that the sheer number of trees and particularly the vast swathes of Nordic forests in Europe means that this solution could easily be the answer to the huge demand for graphite as sales of EVs explode over the next few years. But wait, I know what you're thinking. Is chopping down a load of trees really more sustainable and less environmentally damaging than mining? What about all the woodpeckers and Squirrels? Get this beautiful squirrel! Well. Where are they gonna live? Oh yes, it is, is the short answer. For a start, the innovation manager for biomaterials at Stora Enzo, whose name I cannot pronounce and will not try, says the company already plant and grow more trees than they use, but more relevant than that, lignin is a byproduct that is already being produced. As they explain, we're not adding a single tree to be cut, we are only increasing efficiency in the current system. So it's sustainable, scalable, could lead to better batteries and faster charging times, and it could negate the need for massive amounts of horrible mining. There must be a catch. Yeah, there is, and it's range. The company are being very vague about the specifics, but have admitted batteries made in this way will have less capacity than current graphite equivalents. But they're not saying how much, so it's difficult to judge if this will actually be a real world problem or not. The other thing they're being vague about is how much these tree-based batteries will cost. It will be competitive is all they're promising at this stage. So assuming the range and price do turn out to be okay, how close are we to seeing these wooden batteries in cars out in the real world? Well, Stora Enzo have put their euros where their mouth is and have splashed out 10 million euros on a new production plant at one of their mills in southern Finland. And they aim to be on a commercial footing within a couple of years. So it's a little way off yet, but if they do pull it off, it could help to solve one of the most uncomfortable truths about EVs and massively cut down on the amount of materials currently being mined to support the industry. Marvellous. And this is just one example of how EV development isn't just about shiny things like going doors, iPad-like interface systems, and funny shaped steering wheels, but also the super nerdy but exciting hidden tech that underpin them. And the Lignode could, and almost certainly will, be the tip of the iceberg of cool new battery tech emerging in the next few years. The other month, Mercedes revealed their all-electric concept, the EQXX, which completed a 1,000 kilometer journey from Germany to France in one charge and still had 15% battery left after the 12 hour trip. Super efficient aerodynamics, lightweight construction and special tires helped to achieve that as did a specially designed new battery which has almost the same capacity as that used in the EQS but is 50% smaller and 30% lighter thanks to the innovative new materials like carbon fiber sugar composites. Although it is just a prototype at the moment, Mir promised that their next gen electric platform will use similar battery chemistry to the EQXX. Toyota, meanwhile, are promising an even bigger step change is on the horizon solid state batteries. To return to the lab for just a second, lithium ion batteries use a liquid electrolyte, but solid state batteries, as the name suggests, use a solid electrolyte instead. They're therefore more compact and for years have been seen as the magic bullet for EVs because they can offer so much more range in a smaller, lighter package, as well as faster charging and better battery life. Solid Power, a BMW and Ford backed US company, claim theirs have a 50 to 80% increase in battery energy density over conventional lithium ion. But there are still major problems that battery specialists and manufacturers need to iron out before they're ready for the real world, including the fact that they're difficult and expensive to produce. Toyota is promising to have them in their hybrid cars by 2025, and VW are aiming for a year before that. But most other manufacturers and analysts reckon it will be more like 2030 at least before we start seeing them in any large numbers. A more realistic prospect that we should see a lot sooner is lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries. They're similar to the standard lithium ion batteries, though they have a lower energy density, which means lower range for your EV. But 
crucially, they're a lot cheaper to make and could have a big role in bringing down the prices at the more affordable affordable end of the EV market. Tesla are pushing ahead with these for their lower price models and Ford is doing likewise for trucks designed for short haul customers. But the bottom line is this, it won't be long until EVs overtake petrol and diesel cars as the norm and all the manufacturers know that battery tech will be the key differentiator when it comes to people like you and me choosing their new cars. Forget horsepower, top speed or cool options, batteries are the new automotive battleground and all the car makers are spending big money now to try to make sure they're at the top of the tree. They have to because it's clear now that their entire existence will depend on getting it right. So things like the Ligno tree battery are just the start because the race, my friends, it is on. What do you lot reckon? Will solid state batteries be the answer? Are we on the cusp of a golden age of fast charging, long lasting battery tech? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to hit that like button if you have made it this far. And of course, the big old biggie, hit subscribe if you haven't already because we have loads of fresh content coming out weekly on EV news, reviews, and loads of other cool stuff. And I will see you soon. Bye.